good afternoon um, what topics did we discuss in our last lecture what are the topics we discussed in our last lecture am i audible till the last Hmm. So what did we discuss? I don't remember anything. Hmm. Different types of dynamic programming. Okay. what else so we looked at the convergence uh, like how many iterations of policy evaluation is required uh, so that we are close to the v pi right because policy evaluation is an iterative algorithm which will give you v pi for any given policy pi so we looked at uh, how far, how many times we should run that policy iteration algorithm so that we are Uh, epsilon close to v pi right yeah. that was one thing which we discussed and then we looked at what is called uh, value iteration algorithm so what is value iteration algorithm so value iteration algorithm one way to look at it is uh, you just you are running policy iteration with just uh, uh, in which policy evaluation is done only for one iteration so that is one way to look at it the other way to look at it is Uh, you just look at it as an iterative algorithm on uh, bellman optimality equations right so you just take bellman optimality equation and just iteratively apply that function which comes from bellman optimality equation like you just use bellman optimality equation to write vk plus 1 equal to f of vk kind of form and then you keep repeatedly applying that f from some arbitrary v that will converge to v star right so that is one way of looking at uh, the value iteration algorithm right so we looked at uh, these two methods and then towards the end of the class we started understanding how do we solve these problems if uh, we do not know the what if we if we do not know if you do not know the dynamics of the mdp right if you do not know rsa and pss dash a how do we solve this uh, problems of finding the optimal policy or finding pi v pi for a given pi like we called the problem of finding v pi for a given pi as the prediction problem and finding pi star for a given m problem as the control problem if you remember so prediction problem is finding v pi control problem is like find thing five star so so these are the topics so i feel uh, everyone looks like lost as if you did not even attend the last class okay. why you're still uh, not coming out of the mid sem is it mm. by the way did you look at your quiz one score okay so what did you feel about the paper it was okay tough easy Huh? How many felt it was difficult? Raise your hands. <laughs> you don't want to identify, or no one felt it difficult. Okay. Anyway, so I think the as you've seen, the mean is around eleven point five marks, and the median is around twelve marks. Okay. So maybe just to make. Uh, get back you into the class mode we'll have uh, just to remind you there is quiz 2 on march 20th <laughs> and uh, we'll i'm not releasing problem sets because the problems are there in the book i don't know how, if uh, everyone have opened the book yet because for the first few lectures we were not covering the book that much we are not following the book closely but from now like uh, like from the mdp topic we were closely following the book as i said i completed chapter 3 and 4 of the book in the last few lectures so if you haven't started reading the book it's a good time to open the book 
read chapter 3 and chapter 4 there are a lot of exercises some are solved exercises some are unsolved so you can look at the book and try attempting those problems maybe on some weekend i'll conduct a tutorial to help you if there are any doubts that you have in those problems okay so it's uh, it's good that it's good if you start reading the book and solving the problems like now we are in the fifth chapter so third and fourth chapters you can attempt so fifth chapter we are covering now right now okay so we looked at um, So this, uh, as I said, when you don't know the dynamics of the MDP, the algorithm, the setting is called model-free RL, where we do not know the model. We looked at Monte Carlo prediction method. So in Monte Carlo prediction method, we looked at two variants, right? Uh, two small, two minor variants of Monte Carlo method. What are those? Do you remember? Now, what is Monte Carlo method for predicting v pi for a given pi? How do we do that? You don't know the dynamics of the MDP, but we wanted to find an estimate for v pi, right? How did we do? Let's say you want to find v pi of s. You start from state s and keep taking actions according to policy pi. And do that till the end of the episode. The environment will keep giving you rewards and nest states. So if you run one whole episode, you will get rewards. You just find the return, like the discounted sum of the rewards will give you the return. So one return will give you one sample for uh, v pi of s right so v pi of s is what expected gt given s t equal to s right this is the definition of v pi of s right so the monte carlo method was simply telling us uh, you start with the uh, status and keep taking action according to policy pi And then you'll get some reward and some nest state. And you keep doing this till you reach a terminal state. So based on this sample uh, trajectory that you see, you find GT, right? What is GT? RT plus one plus gamma times RT plus two plus so on, right? You, you observe these numbers, right? You just look at these numbers that will give us a GT. So that GT will give us one sample for our uh, V pi of S. So you repeat this experiment multiple times. You again start from status and complete the episode. Then you get another sample for GT. So let's say you do it for n times. Then you take the average of all those GTs. Uh, you'll get one, you'll get an estimate of uh, V pi of S, okay? So we looked at two variants of this algorithm. Uh, can someone remind me what are those two variants? Hmm? Yeah, so what is Monte Carlo first visit and every visit? So what is Monte Carlo first visit? So in this trajectory, let's say at some other uh, time slot, let's say you again reach the same status, right? Now, uh, if if you look at the GT plus two or GT plus, like the return from time from starting from time T plus two, that is also a valid sample for uh, V pi of S, right? 
because that is also if you start from status what is the total reward that you will get so now you have one sample uh, return like if you look at from here to there you get one uh, gt from here to here you get another value for vpy of s one another sample for vpy of s if you use both these samples uh, for finding estimating vpy of s then you call it a every visit monte carlo method because uh, you are using every visit of uh, that state to get a sample for uh, vpy of s but if you use only uh, the sample corresponding to the first time that you visit that state and then it's called uh, first time monte carlo first visit okay why are the ringing the bell now so this is uh, monte carlo first visit and every visit uh, as i said in the every visit uh, version of monte carlo the samples are correlated in the sense that these are not independent samples because if we know that this written uh, will have some correlation with this written the only difference is these two terms right rt plus 1 and rt plus 2 other than that the return is the same so there is some correlation in this uh, every visit algorithm okay so now uh, what we'll do is we'll look at uh, uh, another uh, way to monte carlo is one way to find an estimate for vpy we'll look at another way to estimate vpy now which is called uh, as temporal difference method okay and so before we actually uh, go into the details of what is temporal difference method one uh, uh, one useful uh, thing is to look at the monte carlo method as an incremental update rule right so let's say you are estimating monte carlo uh, estimate for let's say some vpy of s vpy of s right right so what will you do uh, let's say uh, you are at some state s at time t now you would have had based on different episodes like different episodes uh, every episode will give you one sample of vpy of s right based on the return that you get in that sample like uh, once you run this whole episode you will get one gt corresponding to if you let's say you are doing monte carlo first visit let's say so from every episode you will get one sample of your uh, vpy of s so uh, you would have had after every sample let's say you are updating your estimate after every episode you are updating your uh, vpy of s estimate so how will we do like we knew of uh, st vpy this is our new estimate of vpy of s equal to v old of st into let's say you have completed n uh, episodes till then like you are looking at the n plus 1th episode so the average can be written like this right the new average like uh, v, uh, the after n plus 1 episode is the average of all those uh, n plus 1 returns so that average of n plus 1 returns can be written like this right if we v old of st is the average that you got after n episodes like the new average can be written like this right so you just multiply the previous average into n and you add your new uh, sample that you got and divide by n plus 1 this is just another way of writing our uh, sample average of n plus 1 episodes correct mm so n is number of episodes or number of samples you have collected per vpy of s uh, before and you got one more sample right now okay so this uh, we, we can interpret as
So I can rewrite that equation like this, right? <laughs> so uh, th this is a useful representation because a lot of algorithms that we discuss will have this particular form, okay? I'm just rewriting this equation like this, okay? So you just uh, add and subtract the old in there, you will get this. So what will happen is uh, sometimes uh, if we assume that the environment is not stationary, that is as uh, time changes, let's say the transition probabilities of the environment or the reward statistics, let's say they keep changing over time, then it, uh, it might not uh, make sense to give equal weightage for all the samples that you have seen till now, right? Maybe some samples uh, of GTs which you have seen long back might not be very relevant right now because maybe the environment is slowly changing, let's say. The transition probabilities or the expected rewards for a given action in a particular state, let's say these are slowly changing with time. Then, uh, yeah. if you have collected a lot of samples of GT, maybe you don't want to give uh, equal weightage for all the samples. Maybe you want to weight the recent samples more versus the older samples of GT less. Because the environment, the recent environment represents your, the recent samples are close to our current environment. The older samples are obtained from some, maybe somewhat different environments, right? So in, in such a case, instead of using one by n plus one, uh, you can use some small constant as an approximation for this update rule. Okay. So this is a update rule which uh, we'll keep in mind. So one way to interpret this update rule is, uh, so let's say the Monte Carlo, this is the Monte Carlo update, right? So what is V pi of S? Uh, v pi of S is expected GT given ST equal to S, right? So this uh, update rule, in this particular update rule, you can look at it as, uh, you have some old estimate of uh, what you think as V pi of S is, and uh, you want to compute an updated v pi of s, like updated estimate, which is v new of st. So you just add to your old estimate some small correction, right? This is your old estimate. This is your new estimate. You are adding some small correction to your estimate after seeing a new sample, right? That's how you can interpret this, right? So some small constant times, uh, the difference between the error between your new sample and the old estimate. That's what this equation tells us, right? This is your old estimate and this is your new estimate. Your new estimate is your old estimate plus some small uh, constant into the error between your current sample and the old estimate. So, what should we substitute in the current sample position that keeps changing for different algorithms? Like Monte Carlo estimate is asking you to use GT in place of the uh, new sample, right? There are a lot of algorithms, uh, at least one more algorithm which we'll see, will form into a similar, uh, will have a similar interpretation. You have some old estimate, you have old estimate, you want to update that estimate, so what you do is your old estimate plus some small constant times the difference between new sample and the old estimate. So the new sample you are computing using GT in this particular Monte Carlo estimate, Monte Carlo method. If we substitute different value for GT there, we'll get a different method. Okay. How you calculate the new sample keeps varying based on the algorithm that we use. So let me show you another algorithm where uh, which is called the td algorithm what we'll do there is uh, like here we are using this uh, in the monte carlo we are using this equation 
and we are just saying that uh, uh, v pi of s is roughly equal to uh, gt we are just taking this interpretation and just updating our uh, estimate in td method what we'll do is v pi of s uh, what is uh, the bellman expectation equation for v pi of s do you remember what is v pi of s if you use the bellman expectation equation what is v pi of s and the immediate reward that you get uh, for uh, acting according to pi in state s which is what r pi s plus gamma times the remaining return which is uh, v pi of s dash into probability of going from state s to s dash when you are acting according to pi right so what can i if i want to write this uh, what is this this is expected pi given rt plus 1 given s t equal to s plus gamma times sigma s dash or or gamma times uh, expected if you take action according to pi what is uh, v pi of st plus 1 given st equal to s right this is how i can write right the immediate reward plus the remaining return when you act according to policy pi right this expected pi will essentially mean this the summation over all s dash t pi s s dash right now just like how we uh, like we want in this update rule uh, we will keep everything same except this part we want to change okay so v new equal to v old plus alpha into something minus v old s v old of st now previously in that something we just replaced Uh, v pi of s is approximately equal to gt so we have substituted gt there now what we'll do is uh like uh, uh, we just substituted one sample of v pi of s right in this place because v pi of s is an expected gt is equal to v pi of s so instead of v pi of s we substituted one sample of v pi of s so similarly this is v pi of s if we want to get a sample like it is written as uh, sum of two expectations right like here we have written it as sum of one expect here we have written it as one expectation here we are writing it as uh, sum of two expectations so uh, let's uh, let's say we want to uh, substitute the samples of these two sum expectations so wh what is one sample of uh, uh, the first expectation how can we get one sample of the first expectation so the actual reward will observe right like whenever you take action you start you are at some state as you took an action the environment will give you a reward right we will observe that reward right that rt plus 1 the immediate sample that you see is an a uh, sample of this expectation right so it's just like whatever is inside the expectation we are taking that sample right plus gamma times what is one uh, sample for this expectation are you understanding what i'm saying so here we are just substituting one sample for the first expectation similarly we want to substitute one sample for the second expectation one uh, estimate of the second expectation can i do this what is v old of st plus 1 like we do received one st plus 1 right from the environment you took action according to pi you will get a reward rt plus 1 and you will get a new state st plus 1 
Now, what should be there in that place? The expected value of v pi of st plus 1 should be there. So, what is v pi of st plus 1? The value of the state, whichever you go into. Now, we are maintaining some value estimates, right, already. So, for st plus 1 state, let's say st plus 1 equal to some s dash. So, for that state, we would already have some expected, like, we would already have some estimate, which we are calculating based on our, whatever method we are doing. So, you just substitute that value here. Okay. So, this whole thing will be one uh, sample of v pi of s. Right. So, this is one way to look at it. Monte Carlo, you just look at this equation. Uh, you, you look at this equation and uh, get one sample for that equation. Then you get GT. So, if you just substitute GT here, you will get Monte Carlo method. So, instead of that, you expand the v pi of s using this uh, Bellman expectation equation. Then you get these two expressions. Now, one sample for this first expectation is RT plus 1, which we will observe. The environment will give us this RT plus 1. And the environment will also give us one new state, st plus 1. Now, we will just use v old of st plus 1 instead of that expectation. So, this is one sample for that second expectation. Or one uh, good way to estimate that second expectation. Right? So, the TD update rule is essentially the following. V new of st equal to v old of st sorry v old of st like what is the update rule general update rule your new estimate equal to old estimate plus some small correction plus some small constant times into the correction so into minus v old of st like this part is fine the only new thing is here v pi of s should be there like some instead of v pi of s we are just substituting this uh, Estimate of v pi of expected v pi of. So this will be what? RT plus 1 plus gamma times v old of st plus 1. So this is the TD update rule. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this clear to everyone? So this is how you can understand Monte Carlo versus TD. Right? Monte Carlo, you are just looking at GT and you are updating. Uh, you are placing GT here. Here, we are just using the Bellman expectation equation and doing something else. So, do you notice any uh, differences? Like, what are some uh, uh, major differences that you can think uh, from these two methods? Like, or what are some uh, observations that you can make? Like practically, let's say you are uh, implementing this algorithm. Can you think of some major differences that are there between this algorithm and this algorithm? Like this one and this one. So to implement, let's say, the first uh, equation uh, where we are doing the Monte Carlo update. Uh, so let's... Uh, how. Uh, when can we implement that the equation? Update the v new. Let's say you have some v old of s. v old of s. You want to find v new of s. Uh, when, uh, when can you update this? You can update only whenever one episode ends. Right? GT is what? The total return that you get in one particular episode. So before an episode ends, you cannot make that update, right? So let's say you were in some state, you took some action, you got a new state. Let's say you took some 10 actions, you got some new states and new rewards. But still the episode is not over. You cannot up make that update. But what about the second one? This TD update. After every action, you can make this update, right? Because what all things you need to make this update? You need RT plus 1 which you will immediately get after taking an action. Uh, the environment will immediately give you RT plus 1. And it will give you what? ST plus 1 also it will give you. And V old you already have. Some estimate for every state you have. So you can just quickly 
substitute those two and you can update your uh, v of st right so this is called an online update an online algorithm in the sense that after every action you can use this update rule to update your estimates of v pi's but uh, this is uh, possible only after every uh, episode after every episode you can only update okay so this that's why this is called an offline update so this is called offline update and this is called online update algorithm online algorithm and this is one major difference that you will find between these two uh, algorithms and uh, one more uh, one more major difference that you'll see is uh, here gt uh, expected uh, we are substituting gt right expected gt is equal to v pi of s right so that's an unbiased estimate that is uh, there is no error in the expectation like expected uh, gt is equal exactly equal to v pi of s so this is called an unbiased estimate okay but if you look at this uh, this is uh, v old of st is some uh, rough estimate that you have about uh, v old like v pi of st plus 1 right so maybe in the beginning let's say you started uh, just uh, this algorithm and v old of st will not be accurately representing your uh, v pi of st right so there is some bias in this thing because you are using some approximate value here which is v old of expected v old of st might not be equal to your uh, v pi of st because this is not an independent sample which you are generating from the purely from the experience so there is some bias which you are adding into this algorithm so the expected value of this whole term will not be equal to the uh, expected value will not be equal to v pi of s so when you are substituting an estimate whose expectation is not equal to whatever you want then it's called an uh, uh, biased estimate okay so this is a biased uh, update and this is an unbiased this is an unbiased estimate okay and also uh, the variance if you look at uh, the variance of uh, like how much fluctuations there will be in uh, like if you are using this update rule uh, after every episode you will get a new v v v pi of, estimate for v pi of s right if you look at how much is the fluctuations the fluctuations could be very large in the sense the variance of this uh, estimate could be very large because uh, you are uh, looking at one whole episode and there are a lot of random rewards which are coming into that update so uh, there could be a lot of variation fluctuations initially in this uh, update rule but here you are just adding one uh, randomness which is r pi rt plus 1 like the other thing is some uh, thing which is an average of lot of things so there is little randomness uh, here compared to, because here there are there is rt plus 1 rt plus 2 so on rt you have a lot of random variables which are playing coming into picture in every update here you have just one random variable which is coming into this update so the fluctuations uh, that you see when you run this update rule will be lesser here than the first uh, approach so uh, in the first uh, in the first approach there is higher variance and in the second approach the variance is less so it's like a variance versus bias trade off the first one is an unbiased estimate but there is a lot of variance and the second variant is a somewhat biased estimate but uh, the fluctuations will be slightly lesser okay so just to note down these points
and one more uh, bias so bias part means here uh, if you are substituting something in place of you want here some actually you want in the place of gt b pi of s right actually so you are substituting gt instead of b pi of s so whatever you are substituting uh, if you take the expected value of that whether it is equal to what you want okay expected gt is equal to v pi of s so this is called unbiased estimate so the estimate that you are substituting is equal to the actual value in expectation that's called unbiased but here this is a biased estimate because the expected v old will not be equal to v pi of st plus 1 so let's say you started this and v old of st you have initialized to something so when you are executing this for the first time you add rt plus 1 plus let's say v old of st you took a zero like your initial estimates of v old of st so you are adding rt plus 1 plus zero so that part is contributing to some bias okay and so the variance part here rt plus gt plus 1 is a, a sum of lot of random variables right which is rt plus 1 plus gamma times rt plus 2 plus so on so in one episode compared to one episode to the next episode the gt value can vary a lot because there are a lot of it's a sum of lot of random variables so if you if you toss it multiple like the first one versus the second one there could be a lot of difference so there could be a sudden fluctuation in v new of st compared to v old of st but here there is only one random variable which you are currently incorporating and v old of st is some estimate which you are using so it won't fluctuate as fast as some rt plus 2 so the fluctuations in the second update will be lesser compared to the fluctuation in the first update so if you just track v new of st as after every episode you plot it uh, like h axis you plot update number and y axis v new of st so you'll see a lot of fluctuations in the monte carlo update rule in the td update rule the fluctuations will be little lesser Will that? So if you decrease uh, gamma, let's say gamma equal to zero, then you are only caring about the immediate uh, reward, right? So the fluctuations will be lesser. As gamma increases, the fluctuations will be more. Because you are giving more and more weightage for more random variables. Okay. So one more uh, major difference that you would like to notice between these two is, uh, like here, uh, did I discuss this term called bootstrapping before? So here, the Monte, this Bellman expectation equation is uh, estimating the value of a particular state based on the value of your nest state, right? Like here, v pi of st v pi, v pi of st is updated based on what v pi of st plus 1 is right v pi of st is the immediate reward plus the return from st plus 1 so this step is called bootstrapping where if you know what is the best, what is the value for the next state based on that you are estimating what is the value for your current state so that means you are updating v pi of st based on your knowledge about v pi of st plus 1 right so this step is called bootstrapping you are looking at what is the value of my nest state to update what is my current state value so this terminology is generally called as bootstrapping where you are looking into the future and using that state's value to update your current state value okay so in td method there is bootstrapping bootstrapping means updating 
uh, updating value of st based on value of st plus 1 okay but in monte carlo there is no such uh, bootstrapping you just uh, to estimate the value of a particular state you never look at the, what is the value of some other state you just look at you start from that state and see what all total return you get and based on that you update your value uh, if you know the value of some other state you are not using that any way in any way in the monte carlo update rule right so let's say you know the values of some other states but you are not using that information to update what is the value of a particular state are you understanding what i'm saying so let's say you have some state s and some state s dash if you know the value of state s dash then uh, we can estimate the value of state s right based on the what equation bellman expectation equation right what does bellman expectation equation tell us v pi of s equal to rt plus 1 plus uh, expected v pi of st plus 1 right so if you use this bellman expectation equation to update your current state value based on the next state value then it's called bootstrapping in monte carlo method we don't use this uh, bootstrapping to estimate the value of a particular state you are just looking at the whole return you get from that episode from that state and you, based on that you are updating your v pi of s if i give you all other states values and uh, even then you are not making use of the, those values to update your uh, unknown state value in the monte carlo method so that's why there is no bootstrapping here okay uh, so in general uh, this bootstrapping is essentially making use of the Marconi's property very well. It is saying that if you are in some status, uh, uh, you go into some other state and the total return will be your immediate the reward plus the remaining return. It is making use of all these properties well. So uh, if once you go to state ST plus 1, how you came to that state doesn't matter. So you just look at the value of ST plus 1 and the remaining re reward to get calculate v pi of s so td method is making good use of the marco property the monte carlo method is not making use of the marco property right it's just looking at its own state and calculating the rewards so if you think your environment does not satisfy marco property if you are not very sure whether your environment satisfies marco property or not then Mar monte carlo method will be more useful because it is not using that the property, right? If you know uh, that your environment is Marco, then TD method is good because it is exploiting that property by doing the bootstrapping. But if you know that your environment, if you are not sure whether your environment is satisfying Marco property or not, then maybe it's uh, better to use Monte Carlo methods, okay? So these are some uh, differences, uh, some important characteristics of these two algorithms. So before I proceed further, are there any doubts? No. <laughs> okay. So let me just uh, quickly look at one example <laughs> to just understand how uh, these two algorithms might give you different answers if you apply these on some data. So let's say there are, uh, let's consider an MDP or an environment in which there are only two states. So let's say there is an environment in which there are only two states. A comma B, let's say. There are only two states. And uh, <clears throat> let's say these are the, uh, and you have fit some policy pi, let's say. You want to find uh, V pi of S. Like you want to find V pi. You have fit some policy pi on some environment uh, where there are only two states in that environment and you are behaving according to policy pi. 
okay now uh, you are seeing these uh, uh, you are looking at lot of episodes okay you maybe you initially there was state a and you took action according to policy pi and le let's say you got a reward of zero okay so when you are calculating v pi of s uh, in a given episode you don't need to see what actions you have taken right as you, as long as you know that you are behaving according to policy pi to calculate v pi of s estimate you don't need to know what actions you have taken right because from state s you just look at the total reward that you get that will give you one sample of gt right so i am just writing the state and the rewards here i am not writing the action i am just saying i am taking the actions according to policy pi okay maybe this is the first episode that i have seen maybe i have started with some state a and i took action according to policy pi i got a reward zero then again i like i environment has put me into state b and again i have taken action according to policy pi and let's say i got a reward of uh, zero so and let's say the episode ended there okay maybe i reached the terminal state uh, maybe i'll just call this as the i'll reach i reach the terminal state okay and then maybe i'll give you a few other episodes let's say this is a, these are few other episodes which i am seeing i am not writing st in the end so you just think that uh, the last one is st so let's say i have seen these eight episodes of data so i have i have started acting according to pi and i have run multiple episodes of data and these are the episodes that i have seen some episodes ended in uh, oh, like lot of episodes ended in one step itself some episodes ended in like the first episode ended in two steps okay so now if this these are your uh, uh, episodes of data that you have seen when you acted according to pi if i ask you what is uh, the value of state a according to this policy i want you to estimate v pi of a what will be your answer what will be your answer can someone tell loudly why so you just look at all the places where a is starting like you just look at uh, from this state you just look at the total return that is zero and maybe that's why you are saying zero right so what will be your prediction for uh, b uh -huh. what first and last you tell me one prediction uh, based on these eight episodes No, you can tell some number. No, why you want to give a limit called based on these episodes? Six by eight, right? One value is like how many? Like if you do Monte Carlo first visit, like you just look at the first uh, uh, time that state occurs. So in this episode, this is the first time that state occurred. so the total return from that state is zero so here it's 1 1 1 so you just take the average of all these things you get 6 by 8 right okay so uh, can anyone uh, give me a uh, different answer for v pi of a which is also meaningful like these are this this two are kind of obvious uh, we can easily guess these two predictions can anyone think logically or from whatever knowledge you have based on mdp is whatever can someone give a different estimate for v pi of a which makes sense we have looked at the different concepts like bootstrapping bellman expectation mdp all these things we have looked at huh gamma you take as one for what v pi of a 
I don't understand. No, the logic you can explain, but what is the number you are giving? You are saying V pi of A is 6 by 8. That's what you are saying. Is that also your estimate? No? Huh? Why is it 1 by 8? It's 1, right? So it's 6 by 8. So if you multiply it into one, you will get six by eight only, right? So, so this is one other valid estimate of uh, V pi of A. Did you understand or why? No, you are estimating that. So what is based on the data? Uh, what is probability of uh, V given A when you follow action according to pi? You like based on you look at all the times where you have. State A and look at what all the nest states. So if there are five places where A is there, you just look at what are all the nest states in those five places. So based on that, you proportionally divide, right? So just like how we computed V pi of A is zero, you had only one sample. So you are writing V pi of A is zero. So just like that, you have only one sample, one transition. So we from this we can only guess that probability of going from A to B is 1 from this given data, right? If there was another sample, let's say, uh, maybe something like this, then you can say with probability half, it will remain in A. With probability half, it will go to B. Or maybe there is, let's say, one more sample is there. Then you can say from going from A to A is 1 by 3 and going from A to B is two by three because this one is also going from A to B. This one is also going from A to B. This is going from A to A. So you can guess that probability of going from A to B is uh, two by three, right? So why six by eight came? Anyone else can explain? Right, so the value of some state A is uh, the immediate reward that you get, like you, the immediate reward also you have to estimate from the data. So if you have a lot of A's, you just look at what are all immediate rewards you got. Right? If there was another thing like A1, B0, then the immediate reward, what will be your expected immediate estimate of immediate reward based on this data? It will be half, right? Because sometimes you got zero, one time you got one for being in state A and playing according to policy pi. So the estimate of your immediate reward will be half. Right? So that will be half plus uh, what is the problem? What are all states you are going into? Like some overall S dash to which you can go into. Into probability of going to all uh, each of them according to pi. Here we are saying it will always go to B based on our estimate. So this will be one and there is only one state and it will be V of B and V of B we calculated as 6 by 8. So here, if this data point was not there, it would have been 0 plus 1 into V of B, which is what? 6 by 8. Right? This also is a meaningful way of uh, estimating V pi of A, right? Is it clear to everyone? So essentially, this is the difference between Monte Carlo and TD. Monte Carlo will give you these estimates because it doesn't care about what values are there for other states. It doesn't use bootstrapping. It doesn't use Markov property, all those things. It will just look at how many places started with state A and just look at the returns from those states and just calculate the average of those returns to get the V pi of A. And the TD method, it was using, okay, if... Uh, a, if you are in A, with, if you are surely going to B, if you start in A, then all these samples are also useful to estimate what is V pi of A. Because you know that if you start in A, you are going to B. And once you go to B, you know that you will get 6 by 8. Right? So the total return will be 6 by 8 for A as well. Right? So this is roughly uh, how you can understand the difference between in these two uh, 
appreciate the differences between these two algorithms right so this is true like the second approach uh, will be useful only if there is marco property that is how you come to b doesn't matter but only the fact that you started at b matters but if how you come to b also matters then we cannot use this approach right because if you had come to b from a let's say you would have got some other return if you come to b from c if you get some other return then you cannot use this approach right because the value of b if it depends on how you came to b then you cannot use it to estimate value of a right if there is markov property which says that how you come to b does not matter once you come to b this is the value that you have then whether you come from a or whether you come from b c it does not matter so then you can estimate value of a from value of b as well okay so like there are few technicalities but roughly this is what the, the difference between monte carlo and uh, td method is monte carlo will try to converge to uh, a value which is like the like the minimum mean square error kind of a like it will converge to a minimum mean square error kind of a place where you look at this data and see if you started from a what is the total rate reward total reward that you got zero right if you started from b you got one sometimes you got zero sometimes so you just look at uh, these things and try to minimize try to fit the best possible uh, of estimate then you will get these things right so you, you started from a and you have seen multiple trajectories and all of them let's say resulted in zero so this will try to just minimize the prediction error between what you are predicting as v pi of a and what are all data points that you have starting from a okay so the other uh, td method you can roughly think of it like this from your given data you are trying to construct a uh, sample mdp based on all the data that you observe so if based on all this data that you observe right now i don't know the dynamics of the mdp right i just seen some episodes of data so based on this episodes if i want to construct an mdp what can i do like there are two states so i'll just write a and p then uh, whenever i am in some state a and if i follow policy pi where will i go so i'll go to b if i follow policy pi i'll go to b according to this data with probability 1 right and what is the immediate reward for i'll get whenever i am in state a if i act according to policy pi what is the estimate of the immediate reward i'll get zero right because you only one sample and that gives zero right if you are in state a and act according to policy pi what is the immediate reward that you'll get you, the estimate that you have is the zero reward then when you are in state b Mm. when you are in state b what will happen mm. maybe uh, let's say the it will go to terminal states when you are in state b it will go to terminal state only and uh, one terminal state when you go maybe you get a reward of one for another terminal state you get you get a reward of zero and maybe this is this is a sample uh, like you are representing all the data into some um, diagram like this you are like if there are multiple states you have to look at all possible pairs of states and write these kind of transitions and you construct some mdp kind of a thing like this and based on that you make whatever predictions you want so once you have this kind of an mdp then uh, uh, you know how to calculate right so how can you do let's say without giving the data i give you this uh, uh, figure what algorithm will you use to find v pi instead of giving those data i'll just give you this bottom figure what algorithms can i use to find v pi
policy iteration, value iteration, I can, policy evaluation I can use, right? Because this is, I'll take this as my, what, P pi A B. This is the value for P pi A B. This is the value for R pi A. This is the, like you can get all those, all those missing information which you require for executing policy evaluation. So you just uh, estimate all those values and then use policy evaluation, you'll get the answer. So you can roughly think that TD is somewhat doing that. Roughly, uh, like uh, there are certain minor technicalities which I'm not going into. Instead of doing online updates, you have to do something called batch updates, which I'm not going into the details. But uh, TD roughly converges to answer, which is got by this method. You just construct this estimated MDP of your uh, data. From your data, you construct an estimated MDP. From that estimated MDP, you calculate your uh, VPI. Because after you get that estimated MDP, you know RPI, you know uh, PSS dash, like these are the estimates you got for all those values then you can run policy evaluation right so you don't know the model so you're first estimating the model from your data and then doing model based methods here uh, the other in monte carlo you're just looking at the data and doing something without even looking at the marco property and the bootstrapping etc okay Uh, is this fine till now? Any doubts at this point? Yeah, there could be a single terminal state also. Like, uh, you can draw it like that also. Like, you can draw with probability 1, it will go to terminal state. And the uh, uh, reward will be, yeah, that's what's fine. One. If you draw only one terminal state, it will be one, and the expected reward will be six by eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're liking more math, huh? Like when I'm teaching theorems, you're a little bit more active. When I'm teaching something intuitive, you are very dull. You got used to lot seeing lot of proofs. You're not liking this intuitive classes, huh? Okay, so so let me just, uh, like everyone understood TD, right? Uh, TD is like V nu of ST equal to what? Tell me, V old of ST plus some small constant times the error. Uh, error between old estimate and what? And the immediate reward RT plus one plus gamma times V old of ST plus one, right? This is the so this is the basic version of TD. Now we will look at a slightly uh, different version of TD, which we call as n step TD. Okay, so uh, like uh, we know that the uh, written can be written like this, right? Written can be written as RT plus one plus gamma times GT plus one. This is, this we know, right? <laughs> GT can be written as RT plus one plus gamma times GT plus one. So can you, based on this, inspired from this uh, update, can you propose a two-step TD? This is, if you think this has one-step TD, can you think for some time and propose me two-step TD? So you look at this expression. This expression is giving us one-step TD. Can you just generalize it to n-step or two-step TD, let's say? Any ideas? 
लिखेंगे आर टी प्लस वन प्लस गामा टाइम्स आर टी प्लस टू प्लस गामा स्क्वायर टाइम्स जी टी प्लस टू राइट सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस इक्वेशन व्हाट विल बी माय अपडेट रूल लाइक दिस पार्ट विल बी द सेम दिस पार्ट विल आल्सो बी सेम यू हैव टू जस्ट टेल मी व्हाट विल बी दिस पार्ट व्हाट कैन आई यूज एज माय अपडेट रूल आरटी प्लस वन प्लस गामा टाइम्स आरटी प्लस टू प्लस गामा स्क्वायर टाइम्स वी ओल्ड ऑफ एस टी प्लस टू राइट नाउ यू नो व्हाट इज एन स्टेप टी डी सो जस्ट टेक एन इमीडिएट रिवॉर्ड एंड यूज दैट एंड फर्दर आफ्टर दैट यू जस्ट यूज द एस्टिमेट Uh, what will be infinite step td infinite step td is what monte carlo right because you are writing gt equal to rt plus 1 plus gamma times rt plus 1 so infinite so that n step td with n equal to infinity is like uh, monte carlo right so now what will be some natural questions that you have now you have n step td and you can substitute whatever n you want every n will give you some algorithm now what will come into your mind next what n i should use why should i use n equal to 1 or infinity why can't i use some other n right so what is an optimal n to use that question will come or if you are not sure what an optimal n is why should i stick to one particular n i'll compute lot of and step updates and take average of all of them right i'll just use one step update one step update will give me this estimate uh then two step update update will give me this sub, this sample maybe i'll just use some let's say five step i'll compute five updates like this and maybe take an average of all of them and then use it in my uh final update rule right so the, there could be multiple like all these are mostly experimental uh, you have to try out different things and see what happens so there is something which does like this is n step td similarly there is something called uh, uh, just like how i said instead of using one particular n you look at multiple n's and find the samples like find this kind of samples corresponding to different n's and just take the average of all those things and then use that average here use that average in this part okay is the is the clear so instead of if you want to use n step one step you will you will write like this right rt plus 1 plus gamma times v old of st plus 1 this is one possibility like could use this one like this is another possibility similarly if i write Three step, I'll get something. V old of uh, st plus three. Now, uh, instead of using one of these as my uh, substitute here, I'll just take the average of these three values and put that in this place. Okay. So that will give you my hybrid uh, update rule. So. one such uh, uh, algorithm is called as td lambda okay where lambda is telling you how much weight you should give to each of these uh, samples okay so you have uh, technically infinite uh, possibilities right n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 so on so now you want to give some weight for each of these uh, Uh, for this you have to give some weight for this you have to give some weight for this you have to give some weight so now uh, in the literature one uh, algorithm that is proposed is you give the weights like this like for one step you have to give some weight for two step you have to give some weight for every thing you have to give some weight right so what you will do is like for gt like i'll just write this as uh, So 
so if i denote this as gt of n like i'll call this as gt of 1 like the actual gt is gt of infinity so i'll call this gt1 that is the sample that you get when you use one step td similarly i'll call this gt2 i'll call this gt3 right so i'm just using a different notation now uh like now i got multiple samples gt1 gt2 gt3 so on gt infinity which is actually gt gt infinity is gt right so now we have these uh infinite uh, possibilities now what i'll do is i'll take i'll give a weight of one minus lambda to this for this i'll give a weight of one minus lambda into lambda for this i'll give a weight of one minus lambda into lambda square so on okay so if uh, if lambda is a number between zero and one or uh, what will be this weight sum to because you want to take a weighted average of these uh, gt's right so what will be the sum of all these weights if lambda is between zero and one the sum of all these weights is 1. So now I will just define gt lambda as the weighted uh, gt's, which is 1 minus lambda into sum over n equal to 1 to infinity gt n of lambda power n minus 1. Okay. So I am just writing these weights and uh, clubbing all the gt's into one uh, gt lambda okay is this clear it's just this final expression is nothing but uh, all the gt's weighted by like the product of uh, the product of so what will be the update rule for uh, td lambda The same thing v new of st equal to v old of st plus alpha times what should i substitute here right so this is my td lambda update rule okay so for like we have seen that Monte Carlo update is an offline update, right? Why? Why is it offline update? Because to get a GT, you have to run one full episode, right? So to get GT lambda, or like whether TD lambda is an online rule or an off, like offline update. So why? Because you need all GTs. You need GT also, like the Monte Carlo, GT infinity also. So, the way I wrote this TD lambda, this looks like an offline update rule. But uh, there have there has been some research which propose some uh, way to implement this in an online fashion. After every, uh, after every action, you will be able to make some update. And the equivalent updates that you get in a whole episode will be equal to this okay so after every action you will make some minor update but the whole effective update will be equal to this update after the episode so there are two versions of td lambda this is called forward view of td lambda because you are looking at uh, you are updating based on what will happen in the next time step what will happen after two time steps etc so this is called a forward view of td lambda which is an offline uh, method similarly uh, like as i said there has been some work which tries to convert this offline method into an online method which can be implemented after every action okay so just like how you do one step td for one step td you just need to know what is st plus one and rt plus one right Similarly, they have come up with an equivalent way to do this in an online fashion, which is called as backward view of TD.
okay so so this is about uh, uh, how to use uh, how to do prediction when the models are not known the model parameters are not known till now we haven't addressed how to find the optimal policy right till now we are only trying to understand given a policy pi we are just trying to predict what is v pi right that's all we have seen till now so i am just uh, in the next class we'll start looking at how to find optimal policy when the model is uh, unknown okay so uh, if you have not started reading it's a good time to start reading the book uh, read chapter 3 4 and 5 also is covered in today's lecture okay Don't want you to. What you just do? Right? Uh, so you'll get it. No, you won't get immediate reply. I will take some.